so I'm all over. Hi, I'm Solange. Um, I will be running you through a few things that help with lower back pain um, as we get into the third trimester. So as a doula, um, I really uh, have always been into fitness and understanding how to make our bodies feel safe and function safely um, throughout pregnancy is a big focus of mine. So that's one thing I will offer to you as my client. Um, but as we're approaching that third trimester, lower back pain is a common issue that mothers experience. And my goal with this is to show you a few things that you can do at home um, to not just um, alleviate that pain, but really have a positive effect on your pelvis um, and your pelvic floor in a way that will help you when it comes to birth, help you when it comes to um, strengthening those muscles so that pain doesn't persist, um, and then uh, preventing that pain from returning is the big goal here. So well, this is level one kind of stuff, so things that we can all or do without me doing any sort of assessment of you um, but that's the big thing or the big thing we'll gain from this today are initial movements that you can do at home to um, assist in making sure that that lower back pain is not something that persists and that if it is happening we are strengthening our bodies to uh, make sure that it's not something that continues. Okay, so what I have here, I just have something for my head. I have a mat for my um, body. Um, and we're gonna go through um, a progressive sequence. Okay, so let me reposition my camera. Okay. So I'm gonna lie on my back. The big thing here that I'm gonna focus on initially is when I'm lying here, um, I want to get my back as flat as I can to the ground. So what does that mean? Instead of having that arch here, I'm gonna bring my back flat and try to bring my pelvis level with everything um, from my head to uh, the bottom of my pelvis. Uh, so once I do that, the big thing that we're going to, the first thing that we're going to try is to rock our pelvis front to back, okay? So we're just going to do a little rock here, so front here, and then back, we're bringing it up and forward, okay? So we're bringing it uh, out, out this way, and then forward here. So just tilting it front and back. The big thing that I want you to try to do here is when we're doing this tilt, we don't want to create that arch in our back. So keeping our back flat to the ground the whole time is going to be our main focus. So we're here, we're bringing it up and back, up and back, up and back. So. What you'll feel as this is happening is you're sort of forced to engage your abs. So when there's a, a almost cooked baby there, you're gonna realize that there's some, there's some um, effort required to engage that core. Um, but that's the big thing, the big movement we're trying to gain on that, uh, that upward tilt, okay? So what I want you to do here is we'll do 10 of these together. Um, and this will flow into our next movement, okay? So 10 here. I'll just do a couple to give more of an example of what's going on. And the more, the better we get at this, the more exaggerated the movement could be without pulling our back off the ground. Okay, so once we've done 10 of those, our next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to rock side to side. So the focus here is still that flat back, but we're gonna bring our hip up this way and bring our hip up to our shoulder the opposite way. So I want you to think about raising that hip up 
while keeping everything flat to the ground, but we're bringing it as close as we can to the shoulder, if you will. So we'll do 10 of those on each side. And this again is bringing this S, is trying to release the, any SI pain that we may have occur, or maybe um, compounding in our spine. Because that's usually where that pressure begins um, when we're um, in that third trimester and a lot of weight is being carried. So we're here, bringing those hips up and then holding it if you can. So for me, my left hip is always what, give, what gives me problems. So I try and bring it up to my shoulder and hold it, still keeping that back flat. And then bringing it to the right. So again, what I want you to do with that is 10 on each side, okay? So big thing is with each of these movements, we wanna make sure that um, where there's a tension, there's also a release back to neutral before we go to the other side, okay? So every time I'm going to my left side, I'm releasing back to neutral, and then I'm bringing my right hip up, okay? Um, not only is it, good, is it a good reset for our brain, but also it's a good uh, reset for our body to kind of um, build the muscle but relax at the same time. And as we get closer to having this baby, the key thing that we want this region down here to do is learn how to relax, okay? All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is that breath that we're associating with um, um, engaging our pelvic floor and, uh, what I, uh, and building strength in that pelvic floor uh, will also help relieve that pain that we're, we're experiencing, okay? So, I'm gonna take a deep breath in. So just an, actually just a normal breath in. And on that release, what I want you to do is think about pulling baby in and also thinking about uh, pull, pulling our pelvic floor up, okay? So we're gonna take a, a regular breath in. And then Pull everything in, thinking about bringing baby close to us, and then pulling that pelvic floor up as close as we can get it. And then after we finish that movement, so once we feel like we've reached the peak of where our pelvic floor can go, mind you, baby is in the way, we're gonna relax everything down there, and then do it again, okay? So we're gonna breathe in, So I use my hands as a cue to bring my uh, transverse abdominis together. So treating it like a corset muscle that I'm bringing in, and then also thinking about bringing my pelvic floor up. I think about an octopus coming to the surface of the water, okay? Um, all right, so the next part of the movement that I wanna focus on is uh, activating our glutes. So. There's a big muscle back here that helps with the stabilization of our spine. Um, and what happens when we're pregnant is we tend to stop utilizing that muscle and you see that huge arch that occurs in where all the weight's going forward um, and we're putting most of the pressure on our back and not in our, in our utilizing our glutes the way we could, okay? Um, all right, so we're gonna combine that breath that we talked about, and we're going to uh, engage our glutes doing a gr glute bridge, okay? So I'm gonna deep, take a deep breath in. And on the next breath, while I am breathing out, I am going to, uh, do the same thing, corset muscle, bring that pelvic floor up, thinking about the octopus, but I'm going to also engage in a glute bridge, okay? So initially when we do these, I just want you to bring it to a comfortable position so that you can maintain that pelvic floor rise and that corset muscles being established, um, and then bring it down. As we get more comfortable and proficient in, in the movement, 
we're going to not only bring the pelvic floor up, use those corset muscles, but engage that, that, those glutes to the highest point that we feel like we can, okay? So if you watch me here, so I'm gonna, and you're breathing out for the entirety of the movement. All right, so we'll do it one more time. So I'm gonna reset because I feel my pelvic floor is not activating the way I want it to. So I was focusing more on the corset and the glutes versus the pulling, drawing up of that octopus, right? So if I'm here, And I went to the peak of the movement where I felt like I could control my pelvic floor and also um, activate my glutes. So what I want you to do with these, this movement is we're gonna go until tired, till we feel like those glutes are gonna look a little bit more perky when we get up, okay? Um, so I'm gonna roll to my side and then roll up because when we're pregnant, that's how you wanna do it. We don't wanna do the rock up. We don't want to um, put any pressure on our linea alba, which is right on top of our, um, I think it's linea alba, but uh, sorry, right on top of our linea negra, which is right on top of our um, diastasis recti, which can become um, pretty sensitive during these times. And that's why we don't like to do a lot of ab flexion to, uh, to save that area as much as we can. All right. Uh, a little hand is there. So we can also do these same movements here um, on our all fours, okay? So we can do the rock, little rock forward, little rock back of our pelvis, doing our tilts. And then we can also do them to the side, bringing them up. Um, but what I want to focus on here is the benefits that we can find in that cat cow. So if I'm here, I'm gonna pull my shirt up so you can see my belly. All right, so if I'm here, um, the big thing that I'm focusing on is with you, the cat cow is here and then here, right? But what I want you to think about as a pregnant woman holding that weight, so we can even utilize just the dropping of the belly at this point to pull um, those muscles away from the spine and get a little bit of relief and also help uh, with any tension we may be feeling in our back, okay? So um, this cat cow is beneficial here for that reason. So if you wanna just sit in this position a little bit, that's awesome. Um, but we can also fully utilize the cat cow. So I utilize the breath out here, sorry, the breath in on the bottom when we are the cow and the uh, breath out, pulling all we can, bringing baby into us as well, and pulling that pelvic floor up as we do it, okay? So I'm going to breathe in. So that is really awesome. I love doing that pretty much all the time. Um, if you just need a reset, it's perfect as well. But that breathing is what the big focus should be on. So um, with the cat cow, the focus is drawing baby in the same way we did on our did the same way we did on our back, uh, as well as bringing that pelvic floor up. Um, and uh, trying to use those corset muscles to bring draw baby in as well, okay? The last thing I'll show you is just a hip opener for me. Um, during my last pregnancy, the biggest thing that was causing me pain was that sciatic, um, 
nerve, but what it wasn't met, it wasn't manifesting into sciatic pain as much as like uh, immobility. Okay. So what I like to do is at the end of the day, put on some meditation music and literally just sit with my feet together, my hips open, and let that, let those hips kind of fall to the side, okay? So you can just sit here, we can practice our breathing, practice drawing our pelvic floor up and then releasing. Um, but the big thing, the big focus here is just letting our body naturally release our hips. So if you see mine, they're very tight. <laughs> So it is a thing I constantly have to work on. Um, so sitting here is enough for some. You can put a band around your knees. Um, which I'll show you real quick. Um, sorry about this. Have a big one here put it around your knees so apply it on your knees while they are um, kind of closed and close together and then just lay back and it'll naturally pull them open even more okay um, so those are the big things I wanted to show you about reducing that lower back pain um, especially during that third trimester. Um, if you can, um, getting to that chiropractor is something I always recommend, getting a massage, but those stretches are always, um, but those activation moves are always really helpful in combination with stretching. All right, and I will leave it at that. If you have any questions, just reach out.